Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack number 20. Wow, I can't believe it's 20 already. This is Julie Willand, and I am so excited to be here with you guys today to tangle along. In our previous Project Pack number 19, we studied the concept of Zentomology, which is the system of categorizing various characteristics of tangles and the relationships with other tangles within the study and practice of the Zentangle method. Today we are going to be deep diving into the genius of blossoming tangles as we have been throughout this entire project pack and I'm just really excited to get started. I am working with the materials that are found in the Zentangle project pack number 20 which are available on Zentangle.com or from some of our certified Zentangle teachers but as always we encourage you to follow along with whatever materials you have at home if you don't have a project pack. Today, I'm going to be using the Red Jelly Roll 08. I've got the Cool Gray uh, Micron 01, the Light Cool Gray Micron 05, our trusty Micron Black 01, and then graphite white charcoal pencils and some tortillas. And then today, we're going to be working on a Renaissance Zendala. I'm going to go ahead and get started with my black micron 01. And the blossoming tangle we are going to be focusing on today is a ruckus. So this is a really fun tangle. Being completely honest, this is not a tangle I gravitate towards often, but that's kind of why I chose it for this project pack because I really wanted to explore something that wasn't um, inside my comfort zone a little bit. And I had a lot of fun with this, so I hope you do too. So a ruckus begins with an orb on your tile. I, I'm not going to start in my center. I'm gonna be slightly off-centered over here. And I'm gonna draw an orb, maybe about the size of a uh, nickel. You're in the U.S. or a Lifesaver candy or a peppermint candy. And it doesn't have to be exact, but we are going to be putting a little fragment inside that orb. And then the next step in a ruckus is we have these radiating lines coming out of it. Um, and if you want to watch me first, because this is a little combination of two different tangles we're doing here. But I'm going to start somewhere on my orb and I'm going to draw a line that radiates. I'm not going quite to the end, to the edge of my tile. All of our lines are going to be um, different lengths, so yours doesn't have to match mine exactly. And then I'm going to aura this line. So I have like this bar coming off of my orb. And then we're going to top this bar off with some poke root. So I'm gonna do my little frowny upside down smile. And then top off with an orb. So I have a poke root coming off of my center orb. And I'm gonna repeat this. I, I'm going to, I've been working with like five spokes going all the way around, but you can work with however many you want. You just don't want them to be too close together. So I'm going to move around my orb a little bit. And I'm going to draw another one. This one's going to be slightly longer. And then I'll aura. And then I'm going to top it off with some poke root. And I am working a little bit larger. These in dollars are great because they, they are more surface area than a square tile. So you can work a little bigger if you want. And I'm gonna move a little bit down around my orb. And I'm gonna draw another radiating 
poke root. You see that one's pretty short. And then another. And then my last one, I'm actually gonna go right off my tile. I'm not gonna top that one off with a poke root. Now I'm gonna go back to the center orb and I'm going to aura the orb, drawing behind each of the spokes. And then I'm going to build off of my poke root that are radiating out. And this is where we're gonna have a little fun. So in the original Aruckus, you would just keep oaring the lines, but we have these fun poke root and we're gonna take this opportunity to make our poke root go in all different directions. So as we begin, I'm gonna begin by oaring this line. But then when I get to about here, I'm gonna branch off a little bit. And I'm gonna to top with my poke group. And then I'm gonna do something similar on this side. And this next one, you can go, if you have a shorter poke root, you can go past it and make a longer one. You can cross over your poke root go underneath and have that one peeking out the other side. You can have your lines going off the tile. Just imagine that poke root's way over there. So there's no rhyme or reason to how I'm putting my poke root down. They're gonna be going in all different directions. You can see these ones are already touching each other. And that is fine. But wherever your poke root takes you, in whichever direction you can go. And then once you've gone all the way around your tile, you're going to aura that center orb again. And then we're going to add some more poke root. I think one of the reasons I don't gravitate towards a ruckus that often is because it can be so structured and rigid. But that's also why I had a lot of fun playing with it and seeing ways that I could make it not so structured with these wandering poke roots coming off. I played around with this idea quite a bit with my ruckus starting in the middle of the tile. And every time I just, I was like, something's not right. And then I just moved it a little bit askew. 
and it just felt better to me. So we all have our own preferences and our own styles. So it's kind of fun to see how we can make those come through, like pick these tangles that maybe aren't our comfort tangles and see how we can make them our own. Eventually you may come to a place where you feel like your poke roots are done growing off of your ruckus. I think I have come to that place here. You can see mine are all going in different directions. At this point, I'm going to pick up the light cool gray Micron 05. And I'm going to continue around my arucus with some more traditional arucus. And so I'm going to come to the middle here. I'm going to treat all of the auras I have here as like a new orb. And so I'm going to start again with another layer of arucus. And I'm going to draw a spoke, if you will, radiating from each spot of the orb. And you'll see here, like right here, I have plenty of space here. I had to squeeze it in. That's fine. Squeeze it in if you have to. We're not topping these with anything. We're just going right to the edge. And this is more of our traditional ruckus. And then I'm gonna go in aura, the orb. If I can, you see on these little spots, I just have a tiny little aura and that's fine. And we're gonna repeat this at least one more time. If I come across a poke root, you'll notice I am drawing behind it in a holobaw fashion. And then we're going to aura our orb one last time. Again, if we can, if you don't have space, then don't worry about it. See right here in this one, I don't have any space to aura it. So I'm just going to skip over it. And there we have finished our Arucus. So I'm going to cap my 05. And I'm going to pick up my Micron 01 in black again. And I'm going to pick a spot. I'm going to do this part because this seems kind of like, when I'm looking at my tile like this, this is the center and then it radiates around this way. Um, so that's kind of how I'm thinking of it. And just on either side of these poke root and also all in between, I'm going to add tipple, the tangled tipple, which is just orbs. And again, I'm working with my black for right now and just working in this spot. And I'm just going to fill it with orbs of all different sizes. I like to start with some bigger orbs. And then as I move to the edge of my space, they might get smaller, but I'm going to fill these spaces with orbs. Now that I have that whole section filled with tipple, I'm going to pick up the O1 that is the cool gray. And I'm going to 
fill this next section again with tipple, but in the light, uh, I'm sorry, the cool gray. So it's the 01 gray pen. And I'm going to begin to add my tipple. And again, this is just such a great background tangle. Add so much texture. It's not too dramatic. And it's very forgiving. It's just a series of orbs. And if one doesn't come out quite the way you want it, well, you just squish it in with some more orbs. And it gets lost in the sea of tipple. So then I'm just filling this space. And I'm actually... I'm going to fill this space and in here, but kind of where this poke root stem is right here, I'm going to use that as my line to stop. But basically all we want, since all of our poke roots are going to be a little different, is another chunk of space over here to add some more tipple with the light cool gray in the 05. So I'm stopping, so I went all the way to these Auroca stems. I would just have this little spot, so I want a little bit more. But again, yours might look different. So you can kind of make that call um, on your own with whatever feels right to you. And then keep on tippling. And so now that I filled that space with tipple, like I said, I'm gonna pick up the light cool gray in the 05, and I'm going to fill any open space I have from here down. And I'm going to fill any open space I have from here down with tipple in the light cool gray 05. Keeping in mind, this is a slightly fatter nib. And so working in a smaller space with a fatter nib, that doesn't take quite as much time. Still working with my 05, I'm gonna go ahead over to the other side here and fill in some tipple, because we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do the gray and then the lighter gray as we go down. But here I'm gonna use this center, these center poke roots as kind of my dividing line. So over here we'll do our light cool gray, which is our lightest color gray that we're working with in the 05. And then the remaining space we'll use the 01 cool gray pen, which is the darker shade of gray. Just really enjoying the process of adding our tipple. You don't have to think. Like I said, it's very forgiving. Just remembering to breathe. Take a break and stretch your hand if you need to. But I'm just going to fill this last area with my tipple. And when you're done adding all your tipple, you can pause and take a look at your tile. There's lots of texture here. I love the juxtaposition between all these straight lines and then the tipple. And one of the last things we're going to do with our pen is our little center orb here. And I'm going to first pick up uh, my red jelly roll and sometimes with your jelly roll you need to warm it up a little bit so you might want to turn your tile over and run it a few times but I always find sometimes my jelly rolls need a little bit of a warm-up and I'm going to put a red dot in the middle of my orb And then I'm going to pick up my 
01 in the cool gray. And I'm going to kind of take off and land and then add some weight to this line. So I'm filling this with a fragment. You can fill it with any fragment that you want that will fit in a round space. And so there we're done. You can put your cap on your pen. And now we're going to shade our tile. And so I'm going to start with my graphite pencil. And I'm going to first work on each one of my poke roots here. And so there are so many different ways to shade any tangle, but especially poke root. But the one I'm going to do is I'm going to add some graphite starting at the bottom, kind of going up the sides of each one of my poke roots. I do love the tangle poke root, but it does always not fluster me, but sometimes I just, I don't know what to do with it, especially when it comes to shading, because there are so many ways to shade this tangle. And I feel like I never choose the right one, at least for me. So when I was playing around with the shading I wanted to do, I was looking for some inspiration. And usually when I need shading inspiration, I look at Molly's tiles because we all know she is the queen of shading. She does not shy away um, from the graphite or the white charcoal. And I, I always find her tiles very inspiring. So I looked at some of hers and then I was on the Zentangle Mosaic app and it was really neat because I was able to go in to the search function and if you subscribe you have some advanced search options. So I could search all Renaissance tiles that had the that use the tangle poke root and see so many different examples of how other people were shading and there were so many examples some people didn't shade inside the bulb they shaded around it or just so many different options and it was such a great resource and I was able to really play around um, with some different ideas and see what I like best for this tile and I don't know it was just such a great resource and I forget sometimes that we can get that specific with what we're looking for. I wanted to see how people were shading poke root on Renaissance tiles and I found exactly what I was looking for. So thank you to the Zentangle community and everybody who contributes their wonderful artwork um, on the app because it is such a place for creative inspiration. And I use it often for inspiration in my tiles, especially when I'm working with one that maybe I'm not super comfortable with. It's always fun to see what other people are doing with it. So now that I have graphite and all of my poke roots, I'm picking up a trusty tortillon. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to soften the graphite. But I'm still leaving like the center and the top of my poke roots without any graphite. Remember when when we're shading in the Zentangle, we're not working with a light source or anything like that. We're just adding areas of light and dark to create that contrast. So we want to make sure we leave that light. And again, like I said, there's so many different ways to shade poke root. So if you have another favorite way or if another way is speaking to you, please go ahead um, and explore that. So I'm just gonna go around and blend the graphite 
in all of my poke roots. And then I'll be back. And now that I have softened all that graphite in my poke roots, I'm going to pick up my trusty General's white charcoal pencil. And in that space that we left light, I'm going to put some white charcoal. And I just, this is one of my favorite Zentangle tools, but especially on the Renaissance tiles, it really just pops right off the page. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with each one. You're gonna pick up a tortillon that's for your white charcoal pencil. So you don't wanna use the same one as the graphite because it's gonna get all muddied up. And I'm just gonna soften that. And you are going to inevitably get some graphite on this tortillon and that's okay. We just don't want it to be super dark. And one thing I do, if I really want a nice clean tortillon, I might take a nail file or an emery board and kind of just file off that graphite if it gets muddied up a little bit. Remembering to take your time I find sometimes I want to just rush through the shading because it's like I'm so close, I'm almost done. But the shading is can be the best part. It's like the icing on the cake. And it deserves all the love and care that we have given the rest of our tiles. So just take your time. Remember to breathe. So there I have all my little poke root bulbs shaded, but we still, we're not done yet. So I'm gonna pick up my graphite pencil again. And I'm going to find the center line here, the center, um, what's the word I'm looking for? radiating band or I'm I'm at a loss for words right now but hopefully you understand what I'm saying this this first one that I put down in my ruckus and I'm going to add some graphite on either side of it up into the bulb and then anywhere that my poke root stems overlap another or go over my tipple. I'm gonna add a little bit of graphite there to bring them forward and send the tipple or whatever in back of it and back. And while we're here, we're going to really just add shading along all of our tipple. Because we're really, we're pushing it into the background. And we're gonna do the same thing all around our tile. All right, I've added my graphite all around my tile. And while I'm still um, have the graphite in my hand, I'm going to find, I'm going to go to the ores of the, my center orb here and find the last one I did with my black pen. And I'm going to add a little bit of graphite right along the edge there all the way around. And then finally in this center orb here, I'm gonna add some graphite all the way around the edge. And then I'm gonna add graphite around that center red orb. And now I'm going to take my tortillon and I'm going to start softening all this graphite that I've put down. 
I'm going to start in this center poke root stem of my rookus. And I'm pulling that graphite out a little bit. And so I'm really highlighting the center one. I'm starting there and then I'm just going to go soften all of the other graphite. Again, we want to leave light space as well as dark space. But you can really see how the graphite just really helps us push that tipple to the back and really helps those poke root just pop off the page. And sometimes if you forget to put graphite, there's often, if you've been using a tortillon long enough, enough graphite on your tortillon to just kind of use it as a pencil. And then once I'm done softening all of my graphite, I'm going to pick up my white charcoal again. I'm going to go to my center orb here. I'm going to add a center highlight. my fragment here and again working with my tortillon for the white just go back and soften it I love how that highlight just immediately makes it pop and then with my white charcoal I'm gonna go to my tipple in the middle where I don't have my graphite and I am going add my white charcoal here. Currently, while filming this video, I am six months pregnant and I think this baby really likes this style because they have been kicking up a storm this whole time while I'm drawing and talking with you all. And it's kind of fun. This is between all um, this and my first child. I filmed a few Project Pack videos while being pregnant. And I can look back at those tiles and they tell a story to me of that point in time. And it's really kind of fun. I recently was looking back on a project pack video from project pack eight um which featured lots of fun jelly roll pens but i was pregnant with my first at the time when i filmed that and i was just starting to feel a lot of movement and he was very active during that video as well so it's kind of fun like i get to look you know our tiles tell a story of those moments and time and they do that without words or anything but they bring back feelings um, and I think that's really something special I have that a lot I can look at a tile and re recall what was happening in my life in that moment um, maybe how I was feeling or what was going on and I think it's really special it's also really fun when you have a journal whether full of tangles or full of tiles it it's a storybook it tells a story um and it takes you back to a place i've written a blog about this before i'll link it um in the video description because i really think it's it's one of my favorite things about my zentangle practice is that our tiles and our tangles are just full of memories and our life story and so we're done just about our shading here and we have a lot 
of graphite on this tile. We have a lot, we've done a lot of shading. Um, and one of the things that I really like to do when I have a lot of shading is I like to go back. Um, I'm picking up my black Micron 01. And I like to redefine some of my lines, the ones that sit kind of on top of my tile. And really make them pop because those lines can sometimes get lost in all of that shading. And I might actually go back and redefine all of my pokeru here. And this is an extra step. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. There definitely is a look to each of these techniques. And it's up to you. Which look you are going for on your tile. All right. And now for our, as we wrap this up, I'm going to be picking up my red jelly roll. I'm going to be putting my chop, and our tile is pretty full here, so we're going to have to tuck it in somewhere, and I think I'm going to tuck it in one of my poke roots, and I'm choosing that because usually I draw my initials and then I circle them as my chop, and so the poke root kind of lends itself nicely to that. And then, of course, we flip our tile over, and with whichever pen you want, you'll want to sign your artwork. And there you have it. Our a ruckus is literally blossoming with poke roots today. That's so much fun. Um, I love all the depth and dimension of this tile um, and really had fun exploring everything that poke root has to offer. And I hope you guys did too. Um, you can see here, I, you probably noticed this, I didn't mention it, but we had, we started with the black tipple and then we kind of go down to the gray and then the lighter gray. So it kind of gives that gradient effect. Um, just a little motion. There's a lot of motion in this tile. Um, and I really enjoy that. And I hope you guys too. So thank you so much for joining me. And I can't wait to see all of your tiles that you guys share on the Zentangle Mosaic app and, you know, all over the internet. So thank you so much for everybody that contributes um, to these mosaics. Thank you and happy tangling.